The longest electric scooter seat has arrived and with it has arrived the Aether Rista. In the build up to the launch of the scooter, we've seen so many teasers, so many promos about its seat. But today we get to see the full package, the full deal, every single feature, all the variants, all the prices. There's so much to unpack and I will do it for you in this first look video. But before we begin, please make sure to subscribe to Car and Bike and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video. Now, quickly come with me as I talk you through everything that you need to know about the Rista. So at first glance, what you will notice is that the Rista is a safe design compared to something like the 450X, which is sharper and more geared at the younger audience. It has a sportier feel to it. This one being targeted at families has more rounded, more, a softer look, more conventional. But at the same time, it's not bland. And this one is wearing this satin type paint finish, which I think looks quite premium. Uh, the headlight unit, as you can see, is this uh, horizontal cluster uh, mounted into the apron. The central unit is the headlight and you've got the blinkers on either side. Uh, when you look at it from the side, this is larger than the 450 series of scooters, but it still has the shortest wheelbase compared to the iCube or the Chetak. Now, if you'll quickly come closer, I'll be able to talk you through some of the other features over here. So this one is the base model and this has the 7 inch deep view display that we first saw on the 450S. The controls are actually quite similar to what we've seen on Aether scooters in the past. It's all very, very familiar. The grips feel fairly high quality, but the mirror stocks uh, are slightly simpler and not quite as sturdy feeling as those on the 450X models. The seat length is 900 millimeters, so it is a pretty long seat. Two people will be very comfortable on this. The seat height is also fairly low at 780 millimeters. I'll just get on it once quickly to show you what it's like. So I am 5 feet 6 and as you can see, I've got both feet comfortably on the ground. So even shorter riders will not face any problems uh, trying to maneuver this around. The scooter is slightly heavier than the 450 series because this weighs in at around 118 to 119 kilos, which means it is roughly the same weight as an iCube, but lighter than a Chetak. Now I'll show you the underseat storage space. So if you take a quick look down here, this Aether says is a 34 liter underseat storage space. The base isn't flat, it is rounded, so you will have trouble uh, storing any hard uh, surface items. Uh, but there is a boot light present and there is also a charging provision. So Aether will sell you a charging accessory. Uh, you can either get a type C charger or you can get wireless charging for an Aether accessory, which I will talk about in just a little bit. There's also a small uh, storage space over here for odds and ends. Uh, for any uh, cleaning cloth that you may carry along with you to clean the scooter or even odds and ends like uh, maybe your wallet or loose change. And at the back, you will see that the grab handle incorporates a pillion backrest. This should come in handy given that uh, pillions are usually quite uh, overlooked and their comfort isn't really taken into consideration. But this is a nice touch. And at the back, you will see it has a wraparound taillight cluster. The central section, once again, is the main taillight and you've got the blinkers on either side. Down here, you will notice that there is a full size protective cover for the drive system. And the scooter is riding on 12 inch wheels, but the front has a disc brake while the rear makes do with a drum brake. And there is a combi brake system along with what Aether calls an anti-skid feature. So what they've done is they've added a front wheel sensor to be able to map the speed of the rear wheel at any given point and make sure that it never outspins the front wheel to ensure you don't skid. Now talking about the powertrain, this basically employs the same motor architecture as the 450 lineup. So you've got a mid-drive motor. Uh, peak output is lower than the 450S as well. This one develops 4.3 kilowatts. As a result, uh, the top speed of the Rista is only 80 kilometers an hour and even at 0 to 40 kilometers an hour acceleration time is fairly slow at 4.7 seconds. Torque though remains the same at 22 Newton meters. Now to sum up the package, uh, there are two variants. So there is an S, Rista S and a Rista Z. The Rista S is available only with the smaller battery pack, a 2.9 kilowatt hour battery which has an IDC range of up to 123 kilometers. 
the Rista Z at the top end has the 3.7 kilowatt hour battery that has an estimated IDC range of up to 160 kilometers. Prices introductory are 1,10,000 for the Rista S as you see it here. It goes up to uh, 1,25,000 for the Rista Z with the smaller battery and for the top spec model with the bigger battery it is 1,45,000 rupees. So what do you make of the Rista? Do you think it looks like an impressive package? Are there any features that you think should have been part of this package? And what do you think of the pricing vis-a-vis -vis its rivals? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you have any feedback for us, we'll be happy to hear it. We have one more video coming up on the Aether Halo Smart Helmet, which will be out pretty soon. So make sure you check that out. And remember to follow Current Bike and share this video with your friends and family.